All right, so your polar grasslands are often called the tundra. Um, grasses are still the main primary producer, but this is one of the few major ecosystems where you see a lot of mosses. <coughs> now, if it had trees, trees would be it would be a forest. So grasslands do not they they do like the savanna has some trees, but typically. The characteristic is that they have very few, if any, trees. Um, and the same is true of uh, the, the tundra. Uh, of course, the cold is a big issue there with as far as trees growing. Uh, they also don't, it doesn't get much precipitation at those latitudes. If you remember the way that air flows and stuff, you're getting into a high pressure region there. And also something called permafrost uh, limits that the growth of trees in these areas. So that's not a, one of your major primary producers in the tundra. Uh, but you do get to grasses, mosses, and small shrubs. Um, the consumers are adapted to cold weather, so the animals, etc., by uh, doing several things like, or having several characteristics, uh, such as hibernating. Uh, they adapt thick coats and, and put on uh, layers of fat uh, to help insulate them. And they also, you'll find a lot of burrowing mammals in this particular type of habitat because, of course, if you burrow, you can get down and, and avoid the, uh, the cold by doing that and those uh, types of carnivores that eat uh, from those. Um, like I said, your permafrost is, is a feature of this particular ecosystem. That's a layer of ice that never completely thaws out during the summer. It's, it's usually about six feet or so under the surface of the soil. And, of course, that means that you're not going to be able to larger plants, etc., are not going to be able to root down into that into the soil past there. Uh, and it also uh, melts during the summer, and uh, you get a wetland area in, those, in these particular areas. As a matter of fact, a lot of uh, mosquitoes and other biting flies and stuff breed in that area when that happens, and um, the people are surprised when they go into areas that are tundra are very cold, but it's, it's still cold in the summer, relatively speaking, you know, maybe 60s or so, uh, but there's a lot, big swarms of mosquitoes and biting flies, and, you know, it surprises a lot of people, but they have them. Um, human impacts has not been huge in a lot of areas like it has been in your more temperate and tropical areas, it's simply because it's too cold really to raise crops, and of course it's, you know, not fun, no fun to live there either, um, but there are plenty of areas where there's minerals that are available. Uh, including fossil fuels, and um, one in particular is known as the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, and um, this has been this is an area in Alaska, Alaska that has been uh, debated uh, back and forth over the decades about whether or not we should drill for oil there. Right now, since it's a refuge, um, no oil drilling or other mineral rights extraction is is allowed. Um, but people have been proposing it because apparently geologists have said there's some pretty uh, decent sized petroleum deposits under the ground there. Um, one of the things that, as far as human impact goes, uh, however, is that when we do uh, have some impact on the, the uh, environment, is it doesn't, it doesn't recuperate very quickly. It doesn't recover very quickly because it's so cold um, and you don't have a lot of uh, primary productivity to regrow stuff, and you also don't have, uh, you have a slow decomposition rates, which uh, makes it harder for ecosystems to recover as they're waiting to get their nutrients back into the soil and stuff and, and you know, start the whole growing process again. It's not, it takes longer in, the, uh, in this type of environment. All right, and then finally, last bullet here, deserts. Um, they occur at all temperatures. You know, I'm going to go ahead and take that group too, because that's the, the idea of it. Uh, what I was actually looking for here was latitudes. <coughs> and a lot of people think of deserts only as being hot, but that is not correct. The main thing that defines them is that they have low precipitation, generally less than 20 centimeters a year. Okay, um, uh, many. Uh, climatologists classify Antarctica as a desert because it gives very little precipitation. Um, but uh, the Gobi Desert, as was mentioned earlier in China, is a very cold desert. It gets down to like I think 60, 70 below. It's very high, 
It's on the it's the it's the on the plateau that's on the north side of the uh, Himalaya Mountains. So that explains a lot about the, the temperature conditions there and everything. But it is a desert. It has very little um, precipitation because it's all blocked by the Himalayas there and everything. And therefore, um, it is a desert, although it's very cold. Um, things there, the community. So what I said, the community, I mean, both plants and animals and other organisms there. Uh, are going to adapt, of course, to low water conditions by minimizing uh, the water loss, by having periods, particularly with plants, where they can go dormant. Although there is a, a species of toad that lives in uh, in the desert that actually can go and go into a state of suspended animation for like two years, where it's basically almost not living. And, again, and of course, it's a it's an amphibian, so it needs a lot. It needs water. It needs a fair amount of water. But I guess it can get in down deep enough. In other words, there's a little bit of moisture there. It stays packed in, and then when it rains and floods again, it, it reanimates. It comes back to life. Um, but uh, that's an example, of course, of being dormant. But we also looked at the uh, the desert blooms, right? We showed you those videos, right? If I didn't remind me to, but it's basically you have a lot of plants that you know deserts will get rain every maybe once a year or every other year or something like that and when they do there's lots of seeds and stuff in the ground that were left from the last time that happened and you have plants there that will grow very rapidly in that short time period where the soil's wet flower reproduce make their seeds drop them and then you know they're going to die off of course but they have done their job and they have made the next generation and so when that flood comes again voila you've got you've got uh, life again um, so those are some of the ways in which uh, organisms in the desert adapt. Of course, like cactuses have spines instead of leaves. Leaves are where water comes out. Nocturnal animals, as you might imagine, they can escape the desert heat. It gets pretty cold, actually, in the desert at night, uh, usually down 30s or 40s, even in a hot desert, because they, there's no water to hold the heat in. Um, we impact, the human impact is um, also, once again, from mining. Um, and you have soil salinization. Hopefully you remember that. Uh, in areas where it's normally desert, but you may have high populations, particularly like in the Middle East, where they got a lot of money from oil and stuff, but they're still living in a desert, but they still want to have crops and food, so they will <coughs> either desalinate, which doesn't completely desalinate it, or use deep aquifer water or whatever else, and there's a lot of soil salinization that comes from that. If you remember using other than precipitation sources for your crops of water, well, eventually we'll leave the, the soil to get real salty from there. And uh, apparently recreational vehicles, ATVs, cause a lot of damage in the desert. At least your book seems to be concerned with that, but that's also been an issue um, of a political issue out in, the, out in the west in the United States. There's a lot of ecologists that are angry and picketing uh, people that are doing dirt bikes and ATVs and stuff like that. So, because um, they run over the cactuses and things like that. And it's also, you have to remember that this, like the tundra, this is not a very productive ecosystem. Stuff grows slow in it. When you do, do, when you do damage to it, uh, it's, it's going to take a long time for it to recover. Any questions about the desert? All right.